In a previous video, we discussed the many claims regarding the death of the tank. Among the many comments I received on that video, I noticed a distinct trend. The insistence on the power of the drone. No doubt you have probably seen or heard of at least one instance from the ongoing Ukraine conflict regarding tanks or other armored vehicles being damaged or destroyed using unmanned strikes. There is certainly no disputing that drones have served as powerful weapons to destroy targets with minimal risk to the operator. However, I feel it is worth taking a few minutes to discuss the question, do drones make tanks obsolete? I love making content like this for you guys and gals, but I can't always guarantee a particular video will remain monetized with YouTube's constantly changing rules. That's why sponsors like Conflict of Nations are such a huge help to creators like myself. Conflict of Nations is a free-to-play online strategy game allowing you to take control of real-world nations in-game and battle against up to 128 other players in real time. Use anything from tanks and submarines to drones as you clash with your enemies or form alliances to dominate the map. Probably the best feature this game has is the ability to seamlessly switch between PC and mobile, meaning your enemies can never catch you by surprise, even if you're on the go. Try the game out for yourself using the link in the top of the description and get 13,000 gold in a month of premium subscription just for being one of my viewers. This offer is only available for the next 30 days, so don't wait to see how much of the world you can conquer. Thanks again to them for making videos like this possible, now let's take to the skies and see what we can learn about the reality of drone warfare. Drones have existed in one form or another for over a century. You could even argue they date back to the 1800s with the use of unmanned balloon bombs. Though conceptually similar, we normally associate drones with something both unmanned and remotely controlled, not just left to drift toward a target. These, however, are still over 100 years old with the US and Britain testing pilotless aircraft with radio controls all the way back in 1917. The term drone, in fact, is believed to have originated in 1935 with a British target aircraft known as the de Havilland Queen Bee. When exactly the first drone saw combat is unclear, but we can definitely say it was some point during the Second World War with the US utilizing them in the Pacific against Japanese targets with limited success. Drones would go on to see more major use during the Vietnam War as both reconnaissance devices and as methods of attacking static targets. All of this pales in comparison to the massive surge of drone use, especially post 9-11, with them becoming an integral part of many combat operations or pinpoint strikes. Although the origin and use of drones predates the modern combat we usually associate it with, when it comes to drones being used against armored vehicles, this is indeed a more recent phenomenon. The ability to use drones against armor has theoretically existed since the mid to late Cold War with the improvements to anti-tank missile technology, but when the first real world case of this occurred is unclear. Systems such as the American Predator drone equipped with Hellfire missiles have existed since the turn of the century, with prototypes even going back into the 80s. These were designed in part to be able to destroy Soviet armor and are easily capable of such an action nowadays. Despite this, the earliest examples of drones being used against armor I could find are from the late 2010s. The first incident I could find occurred when an ISIS drone was used to drop an explosive into an Iraqi M1 Abrams reportedly killing the tank's commander. About one year after this, reports of a Syrian T-72 destroyed by a US Reaper drone made headlines after it came within firing range of US backed forces. Regardless of when the first instance actually occurred though, the fact remains that tanks are not immune to these types of weapons. This has become increasingly evident with the recent conflict between Ukraine and Russia, but also was shown in 2020 with Azerbaijani drones being used against Armenian armor. This brief history lesson on drones is great, but we're here today to talk about whether this spells doom for tanks moving forward. The trouble I ran into while researching this is the lack of information available, no doubt part of the reason you clicked on this video yourself. There's no shortage of clickbait articles hailing the victories of drones in Ukraine, but I wanted to talk to someone who actually understands the subject more. 
Thankfully, I was able to spend some time speaking with Paul Shari, the Vice President and Director of Studies for the Center for a New American Security, but I'll let him explain in his own words why you should listen to him on this topic. Well, before we start, do you want to uh, just briefly introduce yourself to my viewers so that they sort of kind of understand who you are and why they can trust you on this topic? Um, absolutely. So I'm Paul Shari. I'm the Vice President and Director of Studies at the Center for a New American Security. I'm the author of Four Battlegrounds, Power in the Age of Artificial Intelligence, and I'm a former U.S. Army Ranger, and I served multiple tours in Iraq and Afghanistan. We've seen a lot about drones being used against armored vehicles in the ongoing conflict in Ukraine. Do you think drones will continue to be a major threat to tanks, or was that early success that we saw only temporary? I think we're going to see over time the battlefield environment become more transparent and more lethal in ways that are going to be very difficult for ground forces and in particular for armored vehicles. So I think we've seen a number of shifts and drones are part of the shift in ground warfare that is going to make the warfare environment much more challenging for armored vehicles like tanks. Um, so I do think it's the case that drones are going to continue to be a persistent threat for armored vehicles on the ground. It's not, you know, as simple as saying like the tank is dead. Uh, yeah. you know, we're going to continue to see tanks used in modern warfare. And, you know, it's not that drones are always going to be able to find tanks or always going to be able to attack them. We're certainly seeing in the case of Russia's military, they don't have very good effective defenses against drones, but also they're not very capable across the board. Um, we've seen the Russian military, you know, is showing itself to be incompetent at basically a whole range of, uh, you know, basic military tasks, whether it's logistics or maintenance or other things. And so that's not necessarily indicative of how other militaries are going to perform. There are countermeasures against drones. They're vulnerable yes. to jamming, right, vulnerable to ground fire. One of the things we're seeing in Ukraine is these counter drone attacks where um, actually Russia is using electronic warfare to pinpoint the drone operators and then call artillery in on them. So these innovations of drones and counter drones are going to evolve. But I do think over the long run, it's going to make the environment uh, more transparent, more lethal in ways that are really hard for armored ground vehicles. And I think the probably the role of tanks and warfare is going to change over time. So going back just a little bit onto the countermeasures aspect, are you familiar with any particular things that tanks have that can be used as countermeasures against drones, or have we yet to see that sort of come into to play? I'm not aware of any systems that have been designed um, that are on tanks today that are specifically used uh, to counter against drones, but there's a lot of things that would absolutely work and have been used in other contexts. So for example, jammers or high-powered microwave weapons, that can zap drones out of the sky, fry the electronics. Those exist. Uh, those have been used in other contexts. They would just need to be mounted on a tank, for example. Uh, certainly machine guns, super effective against drones. So that also is the kind of thing that could be mounted against tanks. So when you look at something like an active protection system for ground vehicles that a number of countries have that's designed to shoot down RPGs or other anti-tank munitions, missiles or rockets coming in, that's actually a much harder problem than shooting down a drone. It's going to be much more difficult to shoot down, um, you know, an RPG or an anti-tank rocket coming in against the tank and having an active protection system take that out. Very doable. That's not new technology. So the drones are pretty vulnerable just because, again, we don't see Russia doing it very effectively. doesn't mean that another country wouldn't do it. Um, if the U.S. was in this position where, you know, uh, uh, another country or a non-state actor, let's say ISIS, was using drones to attack U.S. tanks um, or another advanced military, like say Israel, I have all the confidence in the world that they could put together countermeasures that would be pretty effective, again, at least in the near term. Thank you a lot for your assistance on this. It was really nice to talk to you and get these answers. I'm sure it's going to help a lot of people kind of understand more of the nuance of this topic. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for reaching out. Thanks for having me on the show. Um, it's great to talk with you. <laughs> well, uh, is there anywhere else that somebody watching this might be able to go to either find more information from you or just on this topic that 
would be trustworthy and not just some article that somebody crapped out in an afternoon. Yeah. So we actually are working on a project here at the Center for New American Security to explore this very issue, the role of drones in the future of warfare and in high end okay. conventional conflict. Um, so we the report's not out yet, uh, but I am very excited about it. And so stay tuned for more from us and very excited to share that report with you once it's released. All right. Well, I will leave a link to you guys down in the description of the video when it comes out. And uh yeah, thank you. I, I really appreciate this. So as we can see, drones may pose a threat to tanks and other armored vehicles, but this is not a one-sided fight. Something as simple as well-placed machine gun fire can easily knock a drone out of the sky. This is further supported by the more recent reports of Ukrainian drone operations being scaled back, particularly in regards to the larger systems, as Russia realizes that maybe having air defense systems to protect against them is not a bad idea. As I said in my previous video discussing the many instances of the death of the tank, there will always be a counter to any weapon system. The future is hard to predict, and tanks will certainly have to adapt to the rapidly changing battlefield. Unlike what many keyboard warriors may try to claim though, the era of the tank is undoubtedly far from over. I want to give a huge thanks to Mr. Shari for taking the time to answer the questions of some random YouTuber who sent him an email. If you'd like to see the full interview, I'll be posting that to the channel as well. I highly recommend it if you found this topic interesting. Let me know what you thought of this topic and this style of content down in the description. This was a really interesting exploration for me and was my first attempt at an interview for a video of this style. I really enjoyed it though, so if you want to see more like this, feel free to suggest topics in the comments. I should have another video sort of like this talking about the Vietnamese prison known as the Hanoi Hilton coming soon, so make sure you're subscribed so you won't miss it. One last thanks to Conflict of Nations for sponsoring this video, and a quick reminder to try the game using that link below. As always, thank you to all of you for watching, and to my YouTube members who similarly support me financially. If this was your first time watching one of my videos, consider checking out one of these options on your screens from me that YouTube thinks you'll like. Hopefully, I'll see you there.